Welcome to the Pistons Fanatic. I'm your host, Dave Dalton, and I'm excited to share my passion and perspective of our Detroit Pistons as we go on this fantastic voyage together. I've been a diehard Pistons fan since the days of Dave Bing and Bob Lanier. I've also been the varsity basketball coach of a very successful program in northern Michigan. Well, Piston fans, it's time to do it. We've got to overreact to the Pistons' first preseason game. We lost in overtime to the Suns. I think overall I would have to say it was a little bit disappointing in many ways, but it is just one game and it is just the preseason, and I know Monty's got a lot of things to work out. The other thing, just to remind you, we have this young team, and again, young teams just aren't always so successful. And I still am hoping that we win 32 games, and I still think there's a real good chance of that, that we could bring things together. But the game today was uh, started out kind of disastrous. We got behind 14-2, to two and... The Suns were um, making every shot, and they were mid-range jumpers, and they were contested really well, I thought, but they just knocked them down. Of course, they have Devin Booker and Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal, three of the best pull-up jump shooters in the NBA, and they're going to be doing that to a lot of teams. Uh, but we did kind of pull things back together, and we cut it to 11 at halftime, the big disappointment for me in the game probably was the third quarter. We had our starters in, they didn't have their starters in, and then they went on a run, and we, we did not play well. So, again, there's just a lot to uncover here about a lot of things. First thing that happened is um, Burks started, was in the starting lineup instead of Jaden Ivey. So that was, I think, the biggest surprise of the day, and who knows what that means exactly. And Ivy came out and played really well after that, but it still was interesting that that was um, what Monty did to start out the game. So, and, you know, we know that he's said that he's going to go based on defense. It's probably going to be the primary thing that gets guys in the game and gets some playing time. And maybe he thinks Burks is a better defender. Maybe he thinks Burks spreads the floor better. I'm not sure. So I... Who knows, too, I think, so before the game, I mean, I think this is one of the most important things I heard all night was in, the, in pregame, Monty, they were interviewing him, and Monty mentioned that he would, had an idea of who's going to start in the future. It just depends on who is healthy. Well, who was not healthy today? Bogan, Bojan Bogdanovic was not healthy. And so I, based on that little hint, I would say that maybe he's planning on starting him. Is he planning on starting him at the two or at the three so I you know he usually plays the three or the four so that's hard to you know decipher and I do think that there's going to be a lot of ups and downs and changes throughout the year where you know I think he's going to there's going to be a lot of time where we're going to be experimenting based on who is playing well and I think Monty needs to get a better feel of the rotation and again there's so much out there that, that could happen just the fact that um um, Monte Morris did not play. That gave Killian a chance to play. Would Killian have got a chance? And he played quite well. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But I just think it's going to be fascinating to see what happens. So um, we ended up losing the game in overtime, but it got exciting at the end. But the, really the thing that you got to know is they had the bottom of their bench playing against the bottom of our bench. And Marvin Bagley came in, and he was marvelous. And he, he lit it up, and then... Stanley Amude knocked down a couple threes, and then um, Asor hit a huge three at the end with 6.9 seconds left in regulation to send it in overtime. But we're just going to go through the stats, and I'll talk about each player as I do that. And Asor, you know, we've heard nothing but amazing things from Monty all week about he, how he's playing and having an elite defender, he says, out like Asor out there can give you more schemes and flexibility, and he had Mikhail Bridges, and, you know, he involved on defense and how much that helps other players on your team by having a defender that's that great. And he also said he made a couple plays in practice in transition that no other player in the gym could have made. And, and you know, one of them he even missed, which is going to happen, but, he you know, that he's such a dynamic player, and it was like, wow. And all the players, you know, I think everybody kind of freaked out about how amazing he is. And he, he did look real great today Monty forgot about him I think he played him 39 minutes so that's I'm sure more minutes than he's ever going to probably play usually during the regular season but he's fun to have out there and he does a lot of things and you know he you know he didn't score that many points he scored 12 points but he played 39 minutes and 
So all of the stats are pretty high because, again, most of our players last year, I mean, Cade played maybe 33 minutes a game when he played. And so most players don't play even 39 minutes. But he, he was three for nine from the floor. He, he had a um, – Joe Harris made a great pass to him right into the basket, and he – I don't know what happened. He just – he ended up not shooting it. He kind of – I think he was shocked that he, how open he was right under the basket. And he ended up um, – I think he turned it over, but he was three for nine, and so that's not good. But he was, and he was one for three on threes. But he hit the big three at the buzzer, and I know that he he did that in the summer league. He hit one at before halftime, and I know he hit a, a game-winning three in the um, in the ignite. And not, I'm, I'm sorry, an overtime elite in the uh, playoff game, the championship game. He hit a three at the buzzer, I think, to win the game. But he had ten rebounds, which we know is going to be great a great thing for him he was five for nine on free throws which is not good but he you know six for ten is good five for ten is bad that's just how it is but he had six assists which is great on he you know his usage he did not handle the ball that much and he's more than willing to make just a simple pass and just move the ball he doesn't just force things even though he did have four turnovers and i think i think those will go down i'm real confident of that but um I just know that he is just a sensational player, a sensational athlete, and I, I don't think he got any steals today, but I think he, he's going to. He almost got some, and, but he makes things happen. He does a good job staying in front of his man. So I, I think that, you know, overall it was a very positive debut for him. Um, Stu played 24 minutes. He was 5 for 10, which is great, but he's 1 for 6 on threes and I mean, we paid him all that money, and the big thing was if, if he could shoot the three, if Stu could shoot the three, and, and he still might. But, I, you know, he just let him fly. He had one wide open one he made, but he was one for six. And so we paid him all that money when we didn't have to. But we'll see. He had three rebounds, and he, I mean, he had three rebounds. He played 24 minutes. So that's not the greatest. I mean, Wiseman had seven rebounds, and he played 16 minutes. And Bagley played, had seven rebounds, and he played um, – 24 minutes, I think. So uh, he still he had three blocks, which is huge for us. And you know he can't jump that high, and he's not that tall, but he has really long arms, and he must have been he was in good position so that he always and he always plays his hardest. So it was sad. Duran got played 15 minutes in the first half and got injured and did not return in the second half. He was only two for four, and um, more scaredly, he was two for six from the free throw line. So he has to do better than that because I will tell you, we look to get him the ball. We are always looking to throw that little bounce pass or that little pocket pass on the pick and roll where he's always slashing. We're always looking for him. He's going to get the ball a lot, and he, he's still going to get a lot of dunks, but he can't be shooting 33% on free throws because he's going to get fouled at the rim. But he only had one rebound in 15 minutes. And he had one assist, which was like the first possession. He made a great pass. He got the ball at the top of the key, and he threw a little hook bounce pass. I'm sure it was a play Monty had drawn up before the game, and he got it to Stu posting up right in front of the rim for an easy score. So um, it is disappointing. You know, if he's injured and has to miss much time because he needs time to grow, but I am real confident that him and Kate are going to be one of the best pick-and-roll tandems in the league, and, we'll, you know, we'll just see what happens. But Cade... The one we've been waiting for, and my, I just love him, and I love the way he plays and how he played great all summer, and he played good for the select team. He was amazing, but he was 5 for 15 in 23 minutes, and so he missed some jumpers. I saw him shoot a little bit flat, and he, um, I saw him practice his shooting motion, which is getting his arm up higher, so that's still you know, going to be a big key. He just never really got in rhythm. He drove a few times, but he never got any free throw attempts. He was two for four on three. Both of them were catch and shoot threes where he was quite open. And he had six assists, which is really good, and only two turnovers, which is really good for him in 23 minutes. But he only had, he had two rebounds. So he, again, he just didn't get in the flow playing 23 minutes. I'm confident that things are going to go better for him. But he is going to have five for 15 nights. And if he's not getting to the line or other ways, we are not going to be probably really successful. So Burke's got the start. Played 17 minutes, and he was 3 for 6, and he's shot so well last year. Again, last year I just pleaded um, 
I wanted him to play so much more. He only played 20 minutes a game, and he had just these incredible stats, and we had such a bad team. And I, I couldn't understand why he didn't get to play more. Now we have more players that are better. But um, he was 0 for 2 on threes, and he is a good three-point shooter. He had four rebounds. He always got rebounds last year, and he got two um, two steals. He, he also gets assists a lot of times. But 17 minutes, that's not very many minutes. But he had six points. So it's a good, solid game for him. Bagley, though, was a monster. He played 22 minutes and had 24 points, I think. And it was 10 for 14 and 1 for 2 on threes and 4 for 5 from the line. And he showed signs of that last year. He shot. He shoots. He is a scorer. He is a bucket getter. And he is a great lob threat. He, you know, they he's available at the rim and they lob it up to him above the rim. And he's able to finish really well. And he makes some good moves. He always is going to go left, end up going left. Sometimes he fakes right and then goes left. But be interesting. Um Monty was impressed with how he played, but I'm impressed, impressed with how he played on defense and said after the game that he thinks that, you know, that's what's going to help lead to playing time if you can be active and help out on defense and be communicated on defense. So who knows? That's going to be a long saga about what happens there. Um, Ivy played great. You know, he didn't start. He still played 23 minutes, which, you know, is the same minute, number of minutes Kate played. But he was 5 for 8, and he was 3 for 6 on threes. His three-point shots looks really smooth. Again, I said it before, that when I've seen him play this summer, it looks even smoother than it did uh, last season when he shot well at the end of the year. But he was 2 for 4 on free throws. And so, he again, last year he didn't shoot a very high free throw percentage. He shot, I think, in the 70s, but he – as good of a shooter as he is, you would think he would be better, but he, he does his usual stats. He had four rebounds, four assists, which are really good for 23 minutes. And he had one block shot even. And, and he only had one turnover and 15 points. So real good day for Ivy. And I know that Monty said after the game, he loved the way the energy that Ivy and Killian brought to the team when they entered the game. So uh, Wiseman was played only 16 minutes and – you know, he got to come in. He was the first sub in. He came in before Bagley, and he um, played 16 minutes. He only shot, took two shots. You could tell that he was trying to move the ball and pass the ball. He got the ball and tried to pass it real quick. And he got, it was two for two on free throws, but he did get seven rebounds. But he still, he didn't look ever comfortable. He didn't ever look like he got into a rhythm. He, you know, people, he just quite wasn't there on defense, which I know that's, something that people complain about, but I, you know, I still going to be interested in what happens. And people, people say that, um, why did, you know, we must hate Bagley, Troy must hate Bagley because we traded for Weissman. Well, that's not what I think happened. What happened is he liked Bagley, but I think he probably even loved Weissman more. And so he didn't know that, that at the time that he traded for Bagley and then, then signed Bagley, he didn't know that Wiseman ever was going to become available. So when he came available, and he did want to unload Sadiq's contract, and so he he made that trade. But it wasn't just you know it wasn't like he just gave up on Bagley. That wasn't the reason. And um, Killian, twenty one minutes, five for eight, pretty good shooting, and uh, zero for one on threes, three for three from the line, one rebound, seven assists, five steals. And only one turnover. So good stat line for Killian. Again, it, it's going to be fascinating, you know, when Monty comes back because everybody's looked to him that he's going to be a real factor on our team. And then if he plays, how is there going to be minutes for Killian? But I know the word out of camp is Monty has uh, been complimenting him consistently about how he's played and how he's, you know, been a leader and how he's, he likes his size. It's interesting, I, I thought about this before, that um, we could put out a really good pressing team if we wanted to, and Monty mentioned it, about the, how we could pre play 94 feet because Sasser uh, loves to do it, and Asora loves to do it, and Killian's more than willing to do it, and Cade kind of wants, wants to do what he said. And so, you know, what happens if you can do that, then um, – you run down the shot clock for one thing, and it, it puts a lot of pressure on teams. I remember games last year when we were behind, and Cade wanted to win so bad, and he would just pick up his man full court and really, really get into him. But um, 
did I mention? I, I think I did, but Asar did make that three from the corner. Monty was proud of him that he was just willing to take it. He was, he was wide open, but it was, like I said, 6.9 seconds left, and we're down by three. And so it's kind of a lot of pressure on him, but he he did he did stroke it. Um, um, the Suns, you know, they were uh, had 46 points in the first half, but they ended up, you know, scoring a lot of points on us. And, again, they, they were playing their second team. And some of the stats, though, that, that was disappointing that Monty and I mentioned in the last podcast was that we fouled too much. And we were one of the leading teams in fouls committed, and we fouled, made 33 fouls this game and gave up a lot of free throws. And then the other thing that happened is today is we, we shot 61% on free throws. And that those are killers. When you're fouling too much and then you're shooting poorly from the line, then that, you know, is a – you're not going to win a lot of games because, again, a lot of games are going to come down to close games. I mentioned her last year, but Jenna Schroeder, she's from the Flint area, and she was the referee in the game today, and so she got to ref in her own backyard. I, can't, I know Kevin Durant wasn't happy with her on one of the calls he made against her, but Pistons, we had, we had 15,000 people at the game, and, you know, seats 20, so that's amazing for um, a game, and I know that people are going to be – Real, you know, a lot of people are going to be disappointed and people are going to be, I don't know how they're going to feel. I, I know I, overall, I was disappointed, but I know that it is just one game. It's just one preseason game. And I know that we're going to have a, you know, it's going to be a challenging season. I think it's going to be full of ups and downs. The biggest takeaway I know is there's going to be lots of great plays we're going to get to see from our team. And I know, I know that a source is going to be exciting. Cade's going to be exciting. i be has a lot of excitement in him, and so does Duran. And so we, we have a, a good team. Harris, like I said, he looks solid, and I know he can shoot, and he made a, some, a good pass in the game also. So we have a, on Thursday, we have the next um, preseason game. So hopefully things go just a little bit smoother there. I, again, we played, we're playing against one of the teams that is one of the top four teams in the league. And with a lot of veterans, and I, I'm going to tell you, Devin Booker is one of the best players in the league, and he was not good, and his team did not win until he was like 26 or 27. And I've mentioned that with about a lot of players, and so we just—it's just going to be, you know, a fantastic voyage that we're going on together. And so just please. Just stay patient, and it's so hard when you've been so terrible the last four years, but I think we're going to put together some really good games, and we're going to put together some really good moments. And it, but I still, you know, the, I never waver too much. I said we're going to win 32 games. As that's my prediction. And then and then I kind of got excited when everything was going on. I said, well, maybe we'll win between 32 and 35 games. So I, we, a lot remains to be seen, and I, I'm confident. I have still all the confidence in the world in Monty and Cade and the crew, and I, I think that it's going to be a fun season. So thank you for listening. If you're listening to this on YouTube, please subscribe and click the thumbs up button. If you're listening on Spotify, leave a five-star review. Be the reason that somebody feels valued and cared for. Give them a, a call to a friend or a grandparent or somebody you haven't talked to lately just to let them know you care. And go Pistons! <laughs>